Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to GNR Central. I'm playing a bit of catch up for like the last month and a half or so. I've been on my other channel, Rock and Roll True Stories, which I'm having a ball with and has been growing like crazy. So I want to play catch up this week and the subsequent weeks on the news for the last little bit. Um, so let's get started and leave your comments down below in the comment section. So uh, I want to big, give a big uh, big thank you to our subscriber, Ben. He had went to a guitar workshop that Richard Fortas held a couple about a month ago or so. And uh, he basically transcribed a lot of what Richard said, including what the next Guns N' Roses album could sound like. So he sent me an email and he just summarized what was going on with Guns N' Roses, uh, what goes on behind the scenes when they're on stage. So I want to give him a big shout out. He said, I asked him if the new GNR album would sound more like a classic GNR album or something closer to a Chinese democracy sound, or if it's even more evolved into a more modern sound than that. And Fortis said the sound will be even more different and more evolved in Chinese democracy. So those of you wondering what the next album could sound like, there you go right there. He also said that Fortis mentioned that the band's in-ear monitors, Axel has a channel with the audience, and he also has a channel where he can communicate to the band. He said sometimes while the band members are performing solos, Axel will be telling jokes to them. He also said the upcoming tour dates for 2019 are still sort of part of the Not In This Lifetime tour, but are essentially add-ons to the tour. He also played a riff to or a brief riff to Rock and Roll Ain't Easy by Dizzy Reed that he performed the guitar part for. He was also asked how Melissa Reese joined the band, and Fortis explained that she used to date Brain, which is how the connection was made. She all GNR also needed an auxiliary keyboard player, and so they added her on board. He praised her for her talent and great background vocals. Now we got some Ricky Rackman news. I don't know if you guys have heard, but he's got a podcast called the Cat House Hollywood Podcast on iTunes, and he discussed the infamous 1989-1990 Axl Rose and Vince Neil War of the Words, and he also described the alleged heated altercation between Vince Neil and Axl Rose, including Izzy Stradlin as well at the 1989 MTV Video Music Awards. So Rackman said, after the show, Vince Neil is looking for Izzy. I was not there, but this is how Vince told the story after it went down. He said, I went up to Izzy and said, if you ever touch my wife again, I'll kill you. He's like, F you, F you, and then I knocked him out. Now, the whole backstory dates back to the fact that Izzy apparently uh, kicked or pushed Vince's wife at the cat house, and Vince got word of it and was not very happy, of course. Now, Rockman would go on to say, for me to comment on this would make me like the other hacks. I was not there. So I, I heard so many different versions, but most have Vince confronting Izzy and hitting him. How hard? I don't know. Did he cold punch him, or was it a straight shot in front of Izzy? I'm not sure. What I do know, however, is that Axl Rose caught wind and was upset. He wanted a piece of Vince. The two got a verbal exchange that got broken up backstage. It ended up with each of them going their separate ways, but it was far from over. For months, words were tossed back and forth, and Axel told me several times that he really wanted Vince Neil. Now, Rockman will go on to say, This stuff has been going on for years now. Even boxing promoter Don King wanted a piece of it. How serious were the guys? It was no publicity stunt. Let me tell you something. Axel Rose is a very intense individual. He really wanted a fight to go down. I think they both did. I remember Axel telling me that he found an island where the two could have basically fought to the death. Axel said he didn't want any press about it. I even heard that Guns N' Roses manager at the time, Doug Goldstein, passed that message to Molly Crew's manager. We never heard anything else about it after that. So turning now to some Duff news, and I gotta say one of the worst parts of doing this channel and having the blog is that I have to listen to Duff's interviews. And really, you learn nothing from listening to them because he tells us the exact same stories, like how he wrote Tenderness, how he was sick of watching cable news, how he's so evolved, and how he's super punk rock, and he used terms like woke, which made me want to throw up. And so basically, he was also asked a lot about Guns N' Roses' new music, and you know, he really wouldn't answer it one way or the other. But he was asked about new Gene R music and he said I love it I love that he says neither confirming nor denying it saying um you asked me a question um and then the interviewer would ask it again and Duff would say I'll just tell you this things are going very positively for our band and we really love each other and that's the coolest thing and in the meantime though after touring tenderness across the country the GNR not in this lifetime tour would continue he said we might have to call it something after a while but there might be a reason to call it something else it was also revealed in one of the articles that um, his daughter, Mae McKagan, not the one who's in the pink slips, uh, she's apparently launching her own fashion line. So Duff did an interview with Vogue magazine, 
But if you read a lot of Duff's interviews or hear them, um, it, it's basically the same stuff recycled over and over. So that concludes today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll be having more news videos coming out throughout the week and the subsequent weeks to catch up on everything. And then I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do when Guns N' Roses hit the road this fall. I think we've got some surpri surprises for you guys this fall as well. So thanks for watching, guys. Hit the like button and be sure to subscribe. And go check out my other channel, Rock and Roll True Stories, where I've got a new video coming out every day, sometimes two videos a day. So take care, guys. Hope you guys have a good one.